Tara, and today I'm excited to share with you a house overview for Lush. And Lush, I think is, they're most known for their things like bath bombs and shower gels and things like that. But they also have a very extensive line of fragrances. They have both body mists and perfumes. And I'm just gonna share the perfumes with you. I do own one of their body mist, which is the Twilight or Sleepy, I don't remember what they call it, but it's their lavender one, and I, I do really love that. But I'm focusing only on perfumes, and I'm going to share with you 12 that um, are still currently available in uh, stores, at least in the US or online on the US website. Um, I'm sure that this varies from country to country, but I think a lot of these are available most places. Um, and so I figured I would just stick with ones that you can still get. Um, I do have a couple others, but those are discontinued. Continued, so I don't know, they're really hard to find once they get discontinued, unfortunately. Um, and I'm gonna rank them from my least favorite to my most favorite. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad. I just, you know, we all have our own preferences. There are certain notes that I don't like, and so there are certain fragrances that I don't like because they contain those notes. Um, and so it doesn't mean they're bad. In general, Lush's perfumes, which they used to be called Gorilla Perfumes, but now they've just gone to Lush as the name. Um, but in general, they tend to be a little bit unique, not always, but a, but a little bit unique, a little bit maybe rough around the edges, um, which I kind of like <laughs> in many ways, and they have pretty good performance for the most part. Uh, the ones that I've tried, they usually last most of the day, if not all the day, and they usually project fairly well. Um, so as a whole, they're good fragrances. Of course, um, they use like, you know, fair trade ingredients where they can. Um, they're really conscious about the the environment and animal um, welfare. So these are all like um, cruelty-free uh, perfumes as well, if that's something that you are interested in. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna share these with you. And like I said, just because I like it doesn't mean it's bad, but I'm gonna start with the one that I really can't stand. And this is Lust. <laughs> this is one that some people love. Um, Beauty Meow, um, Kristen, she loves this one. Brandon from Da Vinci's Alchemist, he loves this one. I do not like it. It smells like bad breath to me. <laughs> um, and the reason why I have it is because they accidentally sent it to me and they told me I could just keep it. So I did not like on purpose buy this. But um, Lust is a jasmine based fragrance. I think that there's some like sandalwood in here too and maybe some other florals, I'm not sure. But I mostly just get that very indolic jasmine that to me smells a bit like bad breath. Now, like I said, there are many people who love this and so obviously it doesn't smell like that to them. Uh, so it's just, to my nose, that's what I get from this. Very good performance on this, I must say. Um, and many people find this very sexy. I do not, but um, you know, that if you're, if you like jasmine a lot, then this might be one to try. Um, my least favorite in at number 12 out of these 12 that I have, but not necessarily a bad perfume, just one that I will not wear. In number 11 is one that I thought I was really going to like based on the notes, but unfortunately I do not, and it is junk. And I'm kind of disappointed that I don't love this one because I would love to tell people that I'm wearing junk. That would be the best. <laughs> um, but I don't really wear it. So this one has black currant, which is why I thought I would like it because I love black currant. And it also has like some rosemary, sage, and I think there might be some citrus in here as well. Um, but junk, the, the black currant in this goes a little bit off on me. Like it doesn't smell quite right. And it could be because of the addition of some of those other notes as well. It also has a slightly medicinal quality to me. Um, I think that on the right skin, like with the right chemistry, this would be really nice. But unfortunately on me, not so much. If you've ever smelled their, um, it's their black body scrub. It's like, I mean, it's like very dark and it's gritty. I think it's called like rub rub or scrub scrub, one of the two. Um, but it smells similar to that because it has that same sort of black current vibe in it. Um, but yeah, anyway, that one's junk. Not my favorite, unfortunately, but I love the name. So if you end up liking this, good for you because you get to tell people that you're wearing junk. <laughs> In at number 10 is one that many people love um, that would be like one of their top ones. In fact, um, Ouch110, he loves this one. It's his favorite, I believe. And this is A Thousand Kisses Deep. 
And um, this one is a very floral fragrance, which is probably why it's lower down on the list for me. It has, um, I think, osmanthus in it, but then also some orange and myrrh. I don't dislike this one, but there's something about it that kind of makes me feel like I'm having my breath taken away. Like, not breathtaking, but like I literally, I can't breathe well or something like that. It's just something that does weird to me. Um, and I don't know why, but it does have this sort of ethereal or like airy type of quality to it. I, I understand why this is a favorite of many people, um, but for me, this just isn't something that I personally gravitate towards. Like I said though, this is not one that I dislike. I do like it, I just struggle to, to wear it because of kind of that effect it has on me. Basically from this point forward, I like them all and then we'll get to the ones that I love. The only two that I really didn't care for that I have are Lust and Junk. In my number nine spot is What Would Love Do? And this one has orange and lavender, and I think it's Benzoin in here. And this one is a, a very pleasant, kind of simple fragrance. I think this is one of their lesser expensive ones. I believe this size retails, which this is 30 mils by the way. I think this one retails for $29.95, which is, I think, I might be wrong, but that's gonna be the least expensive that you'll find because I, that's where they start. And then for the 30 mils, they can go up to like I think even $80 for 30 mils. So some of them can get very pricey, um, but they do have several that are at that like 30 to $40 price point. And especially, I feel like a lot of the 30 mils fall between $30 and $50. Um, so, you know, reasonably priced. But like I said, this one is one of their lower price ones. And it is a nice like orangey lavender fragrance. I think that the lavender is gonna put some people off on here because you definitely can smell it, but it is balanced nicely with the orange. Again, this is, it's number nine, so not my favorite, but I don't dislike it. Not one I'll wear a ton though. Next up in the number eight spot is Pansy. And this is one that is a little bit lighter fragrance. I think this would be good for spring and summer especially spring, I think. This one I get definitely orange blossom, a touch of, I think, bergamot or some sort of citrus, a little bit of like an herbal quality even to it, but it's a nice, light, refreshing fragrance. And I think the name is Fitting Pansy. Um, you know, it kind of reminds me of something that would be light and, you know, clean and, you know, just a pretty style fragrance. So yeah, this is orange blossom. Um, like I said, I think there's some bergamot or some sort of citrus in there. There's definitely something in there that's a little bit herbal. I'm not exactly sure what that note would be. Um, and then maybe the tiniest touch of some other kind of fruit, but I'm not positive. Um, so that's number eight, pansy, and it's a good springtime fragrance. In at number seven is probably one of the most popular fragrances. And again, for many people, it's gonna be high up on their list, higher than I have it. This is Lord of Misrule. And um, I first got the shower gel of this and I enjoyed that. And I've had the, several of their bath bombs in this scent, um, but I finally got the fragrance and it is, I actually think I prefer the scent of the fragrance over the shower gel and the bath bombs, but obviously it's incredibly similar. It smells nearly identical, but I think you get more vanilla in the actual perfume. So this has vanilla, patchouli, and I think it's black pepper that gives it a little bit of spice um, to Lord of Mist rule. It is though a nice, uh, you know, vanilla patchouli, but the patchouli is strong. Like I said, I think in the perfume you get a little bit more vanilla than you get maybe in the shower gel, um, or perhaps my nose has just changed because it was a year ago when I had that shower gel. Um, but anyway, uh, I really, do enjoy this, um, even though I'm not huge into patchouli, I like this one. It's not, it's strong, but it's not like really dirty. It's a little bit dirty, but it's not really dirty patchouli. And I think the vanilla balances it nicely with just a touch of spice. At number six is another fresher, lighter style fragrance that I think would also be good for spring and summer, especially summer. This one is called Dirty. I like this name too. What are you wearing, Dirty? <laughs> Doesn't quite sound as fun as junk, but it's still interesting. The funny part is that it doesn't smell dirty. Um, I'm not sure if it's because it has this like a green leafiness to it. I definitely get mint and I think thyme in here. There's also some lavender and a little bit of maybe some woodiness. I'm not exactly sure what, but uh, definitely a, a minty style fragrance. So it doesn't make me feel dirty at all when I wear it. In fact, it feels very refreshing when you wear it. 
And if you like mint, uh, Andreas, which I think he has this already, actually, I'm almost 100% certain that Andreas at Service Fragrance has this. And he's actually one of the reasons why I've gotten back into Lush fragrances so much recently. If you haven't checked out his channel, I'll link that down below. He has a great channel. Um, and he's also a teacher, uh, which I appreciate. But um, he really enjoys a lot of these fragrances as well, and he's been talking about them on his channel, and so it really kind of reignited my interest in a lot of their perfumes. So again, um, Dirty is a nice mint fragrance, and it's in at number six. Number five is one that I got interested in trying after I heard Barry from Centralize talk about it, and it is Rose Jam. And the name kind of gives it away, right? It's a jammy rose, and I mean, it's a jammy rose. I think there could be some other floral in here besides rose, and there's definitely just a touch of like a lemon or some sort of citrus, but it is mostly this really sweet jammy rose. Like if you truly had rose jam, that's what it would smell like is this right here. This is a potent one. Um, like I said, they all have pretty good lasting power and decent to strong projection. Um, and this is gonna be one of the stronger ones. I don't spray very much of this on, even though I tend to be an oversprayer, I don't spray a lot of this one because it is pretty strong. Um, but yeah, a really nice, sweet, jammy rose if you're interested in that style of fragrance. Um, and that is number five. At number four is a fragrance that I also had the shower gel first, and I love the shower gel so much that I had to get the perfume, and it is American Cream. This one, um, actually I think they first made it as a conditioner and the scent of the conditioner was so popular that then they made it into the shower gel and the perfume. But this one has vanilla, strawberry, orange, some like milky creaminess. I think the inspiration that they say on their website is like a strawberry milkshake kind of thing. I also kind of liken it to a cream soda style fragrance. Um, I think that there's also, there's something in here herbally it might be sage that's in here. Um, so it's not like overly sweet by any means, even though it has those things because the cream and that sort of herbal note that's in there ground it a little bit, so it's not too sweet, but you still do get you know, that uh, strawberry milkshakey kind of vibe from this a little bit, but not that sweet. Um, so that is American Cream. It's in at number four and it's just a really easy wearing. I think honestly, out of all of these, this might be one of the least challenging, not that, Many of these are not challenging necessarily, um, but I think some of them can be. This one I don't think is very challenging. I think it would be pretty mass pleasing and most people would enjoy it. All right, we're getting to the top three and at number three is their vanilla fragrance called Vanillary. And this one is a soft fluffy vanilla with a little bit of, I think it's Tonka that's in there, and then some Jasmine. But this Jasmine doesn't go indolic to me at all. I don't have any issue with it. Does not smell like bad breath. Um, I do quite like this fragrance and I think this is another very popular one from the house. I've seen um, Deborah Day on her channel talk about it. I'll try to remember to link her as well. Um, but she's talked about it, she likes this one, I like it too. I think it's a really nice vanilla um, fragrance and another one that would probably be fairly mass appealing. In my number two spot is a sandalwood based fragrance and it's called Smuggler's Soul. And this is one, um, I think several of these have been around for a long time, but this one certainly has. It has sandalwood and lemongrass and vetiver and you can definitely get those notes. There could be additional notes in there, but those are the three that really stand out to me. And I, I just really enjoy this combination with that citrus and the sandalwood. It's really nice. And this is another one that does last all day, at least on my skin, maybe not everybody's, but for me, it lasted all day. Not super strong projection, but great longevity on that. Um, and in general, I am very impressed by how long many of these fragrances last, considering that they do use at least some, I believe, natural ingredients, if not, a lot of natural ingredients, and as you may or may not know, when you use naturals as opposed to synthetics, it usually means that the performance is gonna be a lot uh, a lot shorter lived, essentially. Um, but it's not really the case with Lush. Like I said, I, I don't know how much they use in terms of natural versus synthetic, but I am pretty sure they use a significant proportion of naturals to synthetics, um, and so I've been pleasantly surprised at how long these last. All right, now we are to my number one spot, and this is my current favorite fragrance that you can still buy at Lush, and it is Rentless. 
This one um, it was inspired by a man who decided to live in a tank and they have another fragrance that um, is inspired by him that's called Tank Battle. Um, I actually think they might have a, a whole line that was inspired by him. But this one, he said that he lived rentless basically because he lived in like this metal tank thing. Um, not like a not like a military tank by the way like a empty water tank sort of thing i think it was um and anyway so he lived rentless which is where the name came from this one is another patchouli based fragrance but the patchouli is not as strong as it is in lord of misrule and i get a lot of the tonka that's in here i believe there's also labdanum and if i remember correctly there's a citrus in here as well um, but this one warms up on the skin really, really nicely and becomes a very cozy fragrance. Um, and yeah, I just, I really enjoy this. This is one that I will kind of, after a few hours, just become addicted to smelling. It smells so good, um, at least to me. <laughs> uh, and I think that it is one of their more popular ones, at least in recent years. Although certainly probably one of the more obscure or unique fragrances that they have in their lineup. In general, I would highly recommend if you can get samples somewhere, which they don't sell samples at Lush. So when I say that, I mean, you're going to have to go through an individual who maybe owns these fragrances and buy them from them, or maybe you have a friend, you can swap samples or something. But if you can actually get some samples to spray on your skin, I believe that is the way you really need to test these. And of course, that's the way you should test everything, but there's something about allowing Lush fragrances to sit on your skin for an hour or two that really enhances and changes them. So a lot of times, even when I get ones that um, I don't particularly love the smell of when I spray them on paper, um, I will spray them on my skin and they will change. And many times they change in a way that makes them so much more beautiful and interesting and pleasant smelling than they did when you first sprayed them out of the bottle onto you know paper. Or if you go in the stores when they used to have testers, they would just have like raw Rocks, like actual rocks you would spray it on because again, they're environmentally friendly. They're trying not to waste as much paper and things like that. Um, but you know, if once again, we get to the point where you can go in store and actually spray them, spray it on your skin, not on the rock. <laughs> okay. And, and like I said, if you can actually get samples from somebody, I think that's the way to go because these really do change on skin more than many fragrances do. Um, and I've been pleasantly surprised by how they've changed at times. For example, Rentless didn't like all that much. Like I didn't dislike it, but I didn't really care for it when I just sprayed it, you know, on like a tester strip, but on my skin, it, becomes something truly addictive, like I said. So anyway, that is Lush. Those are their perfumes. They have way more than this. And like I said, they've, they have many that have been discontinued. Sometimes they bring them back. One that I really want to get that's discontinued is Yognog because that's another shower gel that I love. In fact, it's my favorite shower gel that I've tried from them. Um, but uh, once they become discontinued, they do get fairly difficult to find, not always, but some of them get pretty hard to find after they've been discontinued. So I figured I would focus on ones that you can still get in case you're interested in any of them. However, uh, like I said, there's, there's lots in their arsenal and there are plenty that I haven't tried. I definitely will be looking forward to testing out more once testers are available in store again. Um, but I'm sure if you go and ask if they could spray it on like a, a paper bag or something for you that they have there, they would do that. Like I said, though, I don't think it does it justice. These really need skin to perform the way they're meant to perform. So now's when I want to hear from you. Have you tried any Lush fragrances? Do you have any favorites? Do you have any that you hate like I do? Um, I would love to hear your thoughts below. If you have not tried anything from Lush, which one do you think sounds the best to you? Just because something's, you know, my favorite or my least favorite doesn't mean that it will be yours. Like I said, it's all personal preference. So I'd love to hear your favorites or which ones you are really interested in trying if you haven't had the chance to test out Lush yet. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.